Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, a couple of uh, days ago, I posted a note where I said that I haven't been able to make a video because I'm down with flu and fever. And a lot of you had a lot of nice things to say and wished me well. So really, thank you for that. It really means a lot. And along with that, I also mentioned that if there's a topic you'd like to, uh, you you want you want me to make a video on, so please do mention it. And a lot of you mentioned inequalities and especially graphs of inequalities so uh, that's what I'm going to make a video on today and uh, without uh, wasting any further time let's get started okay so I'm gonna start with inequalities and uh, before before we jump straight to the graphs part there are a couple of uh, prerequisites and I'm pretty sure that the uh, reason why one of the reasons why a lot of you are struggling with inequalities is because you don't you, you the you don't have the coordinate geometry part sorted out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skim through the coordinate geometry related concept just so that you have a solid grip on on that. And then once you have a solid grip on that, you will be able to do inequalities with ease, inshallah. Okay. So the first thing that I would like to start with is the gradient. Okay, it's very important for us to not only know what the formula for calculating the gradient is, but also we should be able to just by looking at the line uh, decide or state what the gradient of the line is going to be. And by the gradient, I don't mean the, the value, but uh, we should just be able to figure out whether it's going to be positive or negative. So that's what we're going to study here. So we all know that the formula for calculating the gradient is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. Basically what we do is that if we have a line we pick any two points on the line and uh, using those two points we apply the formula where we calculate the change in y and divide it by the corresponding change in x and that's how we calculate the gradient. But how do you decide just by looking at the line whether the gradient is going to be positive or negative? That's something that's very important for us to know. Okay, so suppose you have here your y-axis and then your x-axis of course and you have a line that goes like this okay now I'm not interested in finding out what the value of this gradient is and honestly I can't because I don't have any uh, points and I don't have any coordinates also but just by looking at this line I can state that the gradient of this line is going to be positive and why is that uh, let me tell you so what we do is this is what we do as reference we move towards the positive x-axis and as we do that we look at the line and we see whether it's rising or falling so if you have a line that's rising this line is going to have a positive slope. So the gradient of this line is going to be positive. So why is this important? The reason why this is important is sometimes the question will give you a lot of lines and will give you equations, but won't tell you which equation belongs to which line. So for example, suppose I say that there are uh, there's an equation which is minus 3x plus 5, and then there's another equation which is 2x plus 3. So uh, just, just by looking at this line, I can very conveniently say that out, out of these two equations, this line is going to have this equation. Why? Because I can see that the gradient is positive and not only that, I can also see that it has a positive y-intercept. So in this line, we can see that the gradient is positive and the y-intercept is also positive. And in the equation above, the gradient is negative. So straight away, we know that the equation is not going to be something like where we have a negative gradient. So that's one possible case. And it's what does a negative sloping line looks like? Let's find out. <coughs> So suppose you have your y-axis here and then your x-axis. So a negative sloping line will look like this. That means once we move towards the positive x-axis, our line is going to be falling. So once I move towards the positive x-axis, I can see that this line is falling. That means its distance from the x-axis is increasing. So this line is going to have a negative slope. So that means if I'm confused between what the equation of the line is and I have, let's say, two options to decide from. One of them is, let's say, minus x plus 5, and the other is y is equals to 3 upon 2x plus 4. All right, these are just random equations. So I know that uh, a line like this is going to have a negative gradient. So the equation that I've written in the, free, so the equation written above, the, the equation y equals to minus x plus 5 is definitely going to be the equation of this line, okay? So these are just little things that are going to help you identify and, uh, uh, and find out what the equation and basically match the equation with the line. So that's one very important concept. And the next important concept is equation of a line. Now, by that I don't mean how to find the equation of a line, although that's something we are going to look into. But what I mean is, let me show you what I mean actually. Okay, so I'm going to make four cases and then we're going to learn 
what their equations are going to look like. So, that's case number three, and this is for case number four. <coughs> Okay, so we just learned that if you have a line like this, this line is going to have an equation which is going to look like this, y equals to mx plus c, where m is going to be positive. All right, c can vary. It can be positive, it can be negative, that doesn't matter, but the gradient for sure will be uh, positive. Okay, and then if you have a line like this, a sloping line, this will also have an equation that's going to look something like this, y equals to mx plus c, and the gradient we can say for sure is going to be negative. But then again, if I drag this line up and down, the y-intercept can change from positive to negative, but the gradient will always be negative. Now, the two, the next two cases are very important, and a lot of students tend to confuse between the two. Okay, I should have labeled the axes, so let's just do that. X, Y. Yeah, so if you have a horizontal line, okay, so a line like this will have gradient zero, all right? So a line like this will have gradient zero. Now, if a line like this has gradient zero, that means its equation is going to be y equals to zero x plus c, and zero x is going to be simply zero. So suppose the point at which it's cutting the y-axis is c, so this line will have equation, which is going to be y equals to c, where c is the point at which it's cutting the y-axis. So for example, if you have a line that's cutting the y-axis at, 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 at let's say one, so this equa the equation of this line is simply going to be y equals to 1. And why is that? Because as we move along this line, as we travel, move along this line, we can see that the value of y or the y coordinate is fixed, but the x coordinate is changing at every point, which is why this line will have a fixed y value and that is y equals to 1. And similarly, if you have a vertical line, so this line will have a gradient which is going to be uh, infinity. And why is that? Is because there is no change in x. So if you go back to the formula, we can see that the formula for calculating the gradient was change in y upon change in x. So since our denominator is going to be zero, what's anything divided by zero? It's not zero, it is in fact infinity. Or if you if you do it in your calculator, you'll notice that you get something called math error. Okay, so coming back to the equation of this line. So suppose the point at which it's cutting the x-axis happens to be p. So this line is going to have x equals to b as its equation, where b is going to be the point at which it's cutting the x-axis. So for example, let's say you have a line that is vertical and it's cutting the x-axis at, let's say, 2, okay? So this line is going to have an equation which is going to be x equals to 2, and it doesn't necessarily have to be positive, it can be negative. Suppose it's cutting the x-axis at minus 1, so that means it is going to have an equation that's going to look like x equals to minus 1. All right, so this is how you can, just by looking at the line, determine what the equation is going to be. Now, we are going to do a couple of practice questions related to this, and then we'll learn how to shade or how to shade different regions depending on what's required in the question. All right, so now we're going to talk about another main concept, and that is related to shading, that when should we shade what region, okay? So for that again, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, what what you guys need to remember is that you're only gonna be dealing with four types of cases. Okay, there's no there's not going to be a fifth case. So let's look into case number one. Case number one is the same as we saw earlier. So this line we know uh, is going to have an equation which is going to look like y equals to mx plus c, y equals to mx plus c, and we know from prior knowledge that this will have a positive gradient. Okay, now. So here's what you got to remember, that anything that's above or towards the right is greater, all right? So let me write this down for you, above or right, or you can say up or right. In fact, yeah, let's use the word up. So anything that's up or towards the right is going to be greater, and anything that's down or towards the left is going to be lesser, all right? You got to remember these two things. So the region that is above this line is going to be the region that is greater than the equation of the line, okay? And the region that is below this line is going to be the region that is going to be lesser. Now, I'm not going to talk about uh, whether it's, it is going to be greater than or equal to or lesser than or equal to. That is something that we'll discuss later. But first, let's get the fundamentals right. Okay, let's drag this here. Now, the second case is where you have a 
line that is falling or in other words you have a line that is negative sloping so if you have a line like this remember I said that anything that's above or towards the right is greater so that means the region that is above this line is going to be greater than and the region that is below this line is going to be lesser than okay so these are uh, the first two cases now we have two more to go so here's the third I'm sure you guys must have already guessed it in the third case we have a horizontal line so in the case of a horizontal line there's nothing right or left about it it's just up or below so the region that is above the line is going to be the greater than region and the region that is below the line is going to be the lesser than region okay I should have labeled my axes let's just do that x-axis y-axis and then let's say we have a line that is vertical okay so let's get that sorted out y-axis x-axis let's label them x and y and let's say you have a vertical line so we know that this line is going to have an equation that's going to look something like uh, this x equals to b and uh, sorry I forgot to mention the equation of the third case the, this is going to look something like y equals to c so the region that is towards the right side of this line is going to be the greater than region and the region that is on the left side of this line is going to be the lesser than region okay so these are the four fundamental cases that you should remember at all times and uh, once we do full length examples you will understand how this is applied and we'll also understand how to use these signs you, you you must have seen in past papers that once sometimes we have greater than and sometimes we have greater than or equal to and sometimes we have less than and sometimes we have lesser than or equal to so you'll understand what to use and when to, you'll understand when what is used